Today we talk with an old friend, but more importantly, trainer of the year, fresh off his v coaching victories, having Jamel Charlo's win and the mega fight looming for the entire boxing community, Errol Spence, his fighter, versus Terrence Bud Crawford, everybody. We have coach of the year, trainer extraordinaire, Derek James. Let's get into it. There he is. All hail, the trainer extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. 155. So you did you you and Jeremy ever 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 spar? No, we didn't. No, we never sparred, no. Did you ever spar with um Ron Sims? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. Was, did you whoop his ass? Please tell me you whooped his ass. Nah, we was good sparring. I think we I'm trying to, I don't think we ever fought. We just sparred. Uh -huh. You don't like Sims. Not like Sims. I just like busting his balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, man. He was like Air Force guy or something. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the Air Force, yeah. Yeah, he started he was, he was older than he, he, he and was the old. Cavalry was older than everybody. He yeah. A, you know, but like, he was a grandpa. He was 25. <laughs> so no, like back then, that seems so old. When, when we're like 18, 19? Right, he was a lot older than us. 15. Was like, I was 15 when I got on the team. You were 15? Yeah. yeah. I won, he won National Olympics. We won National Junior Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won all that shit. So you guys you guys were both on the Olympic team, right? No. We won the National Junior Olympics. Oh. He was like, but I lost the Olympic trial to Chris Bird. Oh. Tell. Yeah. What's up, Mike? What's up, Corey Spinks? Um, so wait, uh, Derek, remind me where you where where'd you grow up again? What state? Houston, Texas. You're from Houston, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. Okay, okay. And how old were you when you started boxing? Five years old. Jesus, and how many? You know, because I think people need to know your background too. How many amateur fights did you have total? Man, hundreds. I can't even count them. That many? Yeah, I mean, I know in, in all my whole career. Well, pro and amateur, I lost like uh, 21 fights or something like that. That's good. Out of hundreds. Yeah. We, we fought. Like, we, we when I saw a box, we used to fight every week. Every week, we used to fight. Yep. And Maybe. you would fight, you would fight sometimes numerous times. Would you ever fight numerous times in one day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did that too. Heck yeah, man. Damn. They, they softened these kids up, like, shortly after that, but... <laughs> You know, yeah, man, we had to fight more than one time in a day, man. What are you talking about? See, you guys never fought. Like, when I was um, an amateur as well, there was there was always headgear, right? You guys never fought with no headgear, did you? No, 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 no. no. Headgear. Well, when I was younger, they kind of, you know, they you, that's when they first started kind of wearing them, you know. But they really kind of didn't wear them before. Mm -hmm. I started mm -hmm. boxing like 77. Okay. Like okay. yeah. And then, you, wow. what did you turn pro? Yeah, in 1992. Same year as Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same. We came from, we were on the same, we are in the same four-year four group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group, yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn, group. Jeremy. When I met you at, at Kevin Rooney's, I had no idea what kind of amateur background you had. No clue. No clue. See, yeah. that? that's why the internet back then, the internet's a good thing now. It could prepare people. Back then, poof. Yeah, right. you can get going all kind of shit, but <laughs> can't back it up. Right. Nah, nah. Um, so uh, you fought your pro career, Derek, at 68? No, I had 160, then I fought at 68, then 75. So you, know, you kind of move up with the older you get. How did you, you feel at 75? I was okay. I felt good. I mean, I, you know, I was, uh, I was still was fast and more athletic than the guys a little bit. Were guys stronger? Mm, not really, because, you know, I think my speed and athleticism kind of like, you know, I used to move around a lot, so, you know. It was yeah, like, was it a big cut to make 75, or you? you no, nah, I mean, I, really, I, I would never, you know. Oh, so, yeah, these cats, like, 
I had to move out of 75 because I, I couldn't. I was like, I walk around 95, 200. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, mean, I never had a weight problem, man. I never had a weight problem, ever. How tall, how tall are you, Derek? 6'2". Oh, wow, you're tall. Right, yeah. So when you were fighting at 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 six at sixty, you must have been towering over these guys. Yeah, yeah. You, what's funny? Listen, I won the National Olympics at heavyweight, right? What? So the, yeah. So the next year, Jeremy won the heavyweight. Yeah. Oh, you won the year before me. I won the year before. You. I won in nineteen. I was uh, the I won I lost, I, I lost in the in the second round. In eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yeah. Well, what well, weight? Uh, seventy five. I don't know, eighty. I don't know. See, the first, the first year, the first time I went to National Junior Olympics, I fought one fifty six. Then the next year, I fought heavyweight. Wow, one eighty nine. You know, I wasn't heavy. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Wasn't like a heavy. I wasn't heavy. Hey, was there any super heavyweights when we were kids? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Everett you know, Everett Escobedo. I know him. I remember him. But I thought we were like little kids, like well, finding junior, well, junior stuff. Mm -hmm. well, he was the, he was the super heavyweight on the team. I know that. That's when we were like seventeen, eighteen. But right. No. Okay. So listen, Joe Carter won in eighty-seven on our team in the junior worlds. But well, before, I mean, you know, the first time they had super heavyweight was in the eighty-four Olympics. Eighty? Really? Yeah. That's what they said. Eighty-four Olympics was the first time they had, uh, you know. Wow, right. And, and I'm just thinking, like when I when, when I fought ju the ju all my junior years, like I, I was, I thought I was the biggest guy. No, nah, we because I won, I won the junior Olympics in heavyweight. Then it was a guy from St. Louis named Joe Caution. He won a super heavyweight. Really? He beat es Escobedo. Uh, Escobedo for 175. Because see what happened? We were from the same place, so they were like, "What y'all gonna do?" One of y'all gonna uh you gonna go like, we have, well, yeah, yeah, we have fought each other before earlier that year. Like, yeah, you're gonna fight each other and beat each other again? Why why do that? So I went in heavyweight and he went one seventy five. So that's how and both of us ended up winning the National Junior Olympics. Damn. Right. How many how many how long did you fight pro? How long was your career? Man, like uh for like seventeen years probably. Why oh. That's an on and off period. It wasn't like, like it wasn't consistently seventeen years. Be some time where I'm not fighting, you know, stop, start back. So yeah. What what, made, what what was your record? What made you pull off and on the boxing? Well, you know, you got a family, you got somebody talking, you know, that that's you know, whatever to you. Yeah, people giving you hear me. Like I was told that I should quit boxing, never be involved in boxing. That Never gonna be anything in boxing, even though I had all the amateur career that I already had success at. So you know, you kind of just like me, you kind of you buy into it a little bit. Not that you're not gonna be anything in boxing, but that you don't want to hear it, so you you, you know succumb to it a little bit. Well, push. well the but, truth the truth too is mo the majority of people don't make it in boxing. So that's true. But I mean, like just like for me being a trainer now. If I would have listened to the people who told me that, I wouldn't be here. Absolutely. I, um, but what was your your pro record? What did it end up being? Twenty one and seven. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Fourteen. Good. Nine. It's funny. People have been talking lately about the records, you know, because I think Errol posted Bomax record or something. <laughs> Everybody started comparing you guys' records now, which is stupid. But that's what it is. Bo man, he sometimes he talks a lot of trash. <laughs> I think the, I think that's what it is. And he, uh, I'm not gonna get into the back and forth with him. Cause you remember Jeremy? Do you remember that? You know what scoring is, right? Like like Jones and right. Yeah. You remember I used to do that a lot. Yeah. You know? I was I was good as hell. So if you know if he wanna, <laughs> we I still got it. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> Lighten your load, brother. Let's go. Shit. I, I, oh, wait, no, I, I'm talking about Bo Mac, man. I ain't talking about you. Man. Oh, Bo Mac. How are you talking to me? My bad. Uh, you know him personally, like outside the ring? I met, him. I met him before, like a couple times, you know. Um, I met him before. And and um, we had a good, like, you know, like good situation, you know. 
I mean, it was like when Terrence was like 135, and he came to Dallas, you know. Then um, another time when Terrence was going to fight DeLorme, and it was in Arlington, basically Dallas, basically. And I saw him again then, but other than that, I, I hadn't seen him. Okay. Okay, so you guys don't really know each other. Um, no, not like that. Not, not like not like this. You know what I mean? But not. Nah. Right, right, right. Yeah, because he, yeah. I, I, guess. Don't, I don't dislike him. I mean, you know. Don't know him. Don't know him. Best part of Texas to live in is what? I think we got several places, man. Yeah. At Dallas, Austin, Houston. And San Antonio, like the big cities. Just those big cities, right? I say that because my son's probably going to be moving to uh, Texas. I mean, listen, I'm just thinking, like, probably Austin is the tech savvy place. It's the tech city, right? Right. Uh, Houston is more oil and gas, right? And then, uh, so if you're an engineer, if you're anything like that, Houston is the thing. But Dallas is like, it has everything. More business, uh, more business. Right. Are you in Houston now? I'm in Dallas. Dallas, okay. How far is that from huh? How far of a drive is that? Three and a half hours. Okay. Jeremy, Ooh. you got to hit Texas next. Put yeah. like, let me show you how big Texas is. From 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 Louisiana, like this border to Louisiana, which is called Wasco. So all the way to El Paso, it's 12 hours. No, that's like 15 hours. Wow. Across I Texas. drove one time by myself into El Paso, out to Beaumont. Yeah, damn, that's down to the bottom, man. Man, I just did the bottom. I just, man, I was like a day and a half, maybe two to fuck. Right, it's as far. It's as far. Yeah, definitely. It, it's big. It, it, it takes a beautiful state too, and and, and so like we got to give all the props to them. But let's let's talk about the elephant in the room, man. You guys had a great night. How right. was it was good, man. It was, uh, man, you know, doing this thing is real hard. You know, it's not easy at all. You know, um, constantly being successful is, is, is really hard. I mean, you got to be truly dedicated to it. You got to be able to um, kind of got to be like, uh, like like water, just keep running. You know what I'm saying? Let everything run off. You hear the stuff people say. Can't get mad about it. You can't be, you know. You can't really buy into the social media aspect of it. Well, so let me ask you this: the first fight with Castano was kind of a back and forth, back and forth. The second fight, obviously, the first I don't know four to six rounds were kind of close, but then Charlo just pulled away. Right. What was done differently? Like, was there something specifically that you guys went in there like we're going to do this and this is going to put post over the top? Hey, I can't tell you, but nah. really, <laughs> so say, what? it was it was more of a, um, the last three weeks of training camp was a more concentrated, focused interest on implementing my game plan and doing it to the you know to the to the T with the movement and really the movement was a he would have caught him a little bit more like the movement was a little he didn't do it all the way. Cause if he would have did it all the way, he would have, he would have, you know, it would have been a little more different. He would have caught him with some other shots. But the movement was we used the movement to create the openings. Because you know, Castano was 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 real kind of awkward, right? Yeah, he's awkward, man. But he really like he's really like uh, he throws the same punch over and over, same punches over and over. And uh, he really, what's funny about it, I want to say this about Castano was that. In the first fight, when you watch him, when Jamel was hitting him, and Jamel's very fast, Jamel was hitting him with those shots. You can see he was bothered by them, but they, for some reason, they convinced him that it's okay that you feel like you won the first fight. It's okay, but I think he let them truly psych him out about how much Jamel's power was hurting him. Because I think that he went back in there this fight. I said, that's going to be the number one thing is that when I look at him and I watch him in the interviews and the press conference, he's talking what he's going to knock Jamel out. Mm. We did the press conference. He said about four or five times, I'm going to knock you out. Oh, he just kept saying it. 
And I was like, I said, man, he must don't remember how much he was hurt in the fight. Mm. Right? And then whenever the man hit him, he kind of buzzed him. But what happened is they convinced, they, they really lost the fight, I think, from the perspective before the fight even happened. Because he felt like he could run in there and do something different or try to put the, put the pressure on him like Jamel can't punch. So that's really what I think. And those shots were breaking him down because I going to, you said when you start pulling him away, he well really wasn't even pulling away. That guy started breaking down. Yeah, yeah. So well, what what do you think was the difference though? Because in the first fight, you know they were both hitting each other a lot. What do you think was the difference with Jamel's power in this fight? Maybe it's just what more the the, the punches were placed, the, the placement. You know the, the what do you it think? Was, it was, it was I probably like more about the placement, more about the selection, the shots, the variety. And he was just shooting like even from like um like uh the first fight you saw, right? It was like kinda like um but this fight was more about him. Like he really rarely missed him. And everything was what I was telling him to was like like even in one time don't shoot to the head, man. Shoot everything to the body, shoot everything to the shoulders and Because what happens is it's hypothetically if you shoot a hook, I'll say shoot a Shoot the hook to the shoulders, right? So if you're like this, right, well, to the shoulder. So when I dip down, you see, I'm still going to hit my yeah. head. So yeah. to the shoulders, right? Yeah. And I was telling like, you know, you can throw a jab in the head, moving, shoot to the chest. Mentally, that pig takes the toes on you because you keep saying, damn, I can't get away from it because it keeps touching me. Yeah, you mm -hmm. keep the head. Yeah, it makes sense. So what happens is, I just said, listen, don't worry about hitting him in the head. Hit him in the shoulders, hit him in the chest, hit him in the body. Those organs, really, that's why that's why everything keeps the body running anyway. And so that's really what it was. He was hitting him, and the guy kept, there was no way to, because even when he gets low, he's going to hit him anywhere. And really, he's going to run right into it. He's running right to it with his and, head. Oh, there's a difference between what you tell him to do and did, did you see um... – Canelo's fight where he kept trying to hit the ball in the arms and it really didn't seem like it didn't work. It looked like he was trying to wear his arms out, right? Well, I think that, I think that it's a different one because I think I believe, I truly believe Canelo trains himself. That's what I believe. I think that... You really, know what happens is when guys, they feel like they know everything. So that's right. Got so good that I mean, because you know, the thing about this, the father is the one that trained him. The son is his friend. So he kind of just playing, you know, they playing boxing, I think. You know, and the son and his friend, they grew up together, whatever. So and, so what do you think Bavol was trying to do? He was trying to do the old Rocky Marciano trick to, like, just wear the arms out? That's who was doing that? Uh, uh, Canelo was Hello. hitting Bavol in the arm. His arms were black and blue afterwards. Hey, man. I, I didn't see the fight. Oh, he kept hitting them over and over. You should watch just the, the high, over and over to where... His arm right here, right at the deltoid, was was purple. Yeah, okay. Weird. And and you know, and at the end, Bivol even made a statement like, "They go, were you hurt?" He goes, "Yeah, my arms were hurt." But he's like, "Nah." Um, and Rocky Marciano used to do that. You know, he used to beat down people, fighters' arms, so they can't lift their arms up. Right. I mean, this that, that that would be, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think that I I I would do that to somebody, right? Mm hmm. Do it here, up under here, yeah. here, here in the back. So hit him up under here and there. I don't know about hitting him on the, I mean, the muscle. Will give him a frog, right? A big frog, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, um, well, it reduces the blood because it, it it pounds up. The frog comes from the, when the blood sits in one area. Right. This is that frog. So, I mean, in all terms, like. You hit a guy in his arms long enough, it's gonna hurt. You hit a guy in the body long enough, it's gonna hurt. It's just, you know, what what road you're gonna go to. That's cool. So, so yes, yeah, so saying that you had Jamel just just touching him, touching him, touching him, and that was breaking him down. Well, not necessarily touching him. I had him hitting him. He was hitting him pretty good, man. It was some pretty hard shots, some good shots, and um, yeah, it was pretty good, man. I mean, he he broke him down. I mean, he worked him. He broke him down. He, he put man, listen. He punished him. Yeah. You yeah. Look at, when you look at when you look at the situation, he punished him, man. Like he um, 
You know, it was inside those body shots and everything's in them with that broke it breaks them down. It broke them down. Man, I'm moving around in my house. It okay. broke them down. But um it hurt him, man. That was that was that and that really was what him having to be able he was a little guy. He really was too small for that particular weight, I believe. Mm hmm And I think that I mean, or or he's just like too small for Jamel, put it like that. He probably could deal with the other guys, but I think that He's just too small for Jamel. That's what I believe. Was this was this really important for Jamel because the first fight a lot of people thought was so close? Yeah, I man, I think it was important really for, for him, for me. Mm -hmm. I, I really wanted uh, – I mean, I really wanted him to be successful and win and, you know, and uh, break the – I mean, I really wanted him to beat the guy. But I wanted – I wanted, I, I couldn't see it going to the distance. I mean, I couldn't – there's no way, like – that I could see him just taking Jamel because he had so much trouble with in the first fight, so that's why I was just assuming that there's no way he's gonna be able to um, take that power this time. I couldn't imagine it, and I mean, and that's really what it was. I couldn't imagine, and not to mention Jamel's counter punching. He counter punched so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, so well. I mean, it was just like every time he threw a punch, it was something coming back. So it was like it was, it was, it was so well, man. He, he did good. Was that something you worked on in, in, in camp where, where yeah. you know, I give it, you give it, that kind of thing? or Well, it was like, well, really what it was, it was like the guy was a counterpuncher. So you just assume, I said, this, we're going to counterpunch his counterpunch. Yeah, that makes sense. So, and Did you go mute? Yeah. Out of range. Mm. Yeah. Out of range. So you know, um, it was good, man. It was good. What uh? So what's what round? What round do you think was the best round for him, for Charlo? Ten. <laughs> <laughs> Other than ten, it probably was like um. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, good round. I like. I mean, the back and forth, and this was the funny thing about the back and forth that they were hitting each other, whatever, and that just shows. His depth mm. shows his ability to um, to uh, be able to withstand or endure and continue to keep fighting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, that shows the depth and it shows the ability to carry that power later in the round, just like he knocked out Tony Harrison in the 11th round. And then he knocked out the Jackson kid when he won the title. It was like in the 8th and 9th, 10th round. So, it's like he's able to catch guys in the later round. This fight, I think it was his best because he he was so much more active, and he his counter punching ability was a, was amazing. And this is is he the first um, junior middle undis undisputed? Right. Right. In the yeah, in the wow. four belts. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. Very you know that? Yes, all four belts. Yeah. Dang. So, but what? Well, how would you? Uh, so you know, one of the some of the. You got four belts. Some, some, you know, the the clock is ticking now. You got you you got to you got to step up and fight somebody else pretty soon, or what? Well, well, they got to the you know that's that's with the sanctioned bodies. So they got to step up and fight us. Well, I know. I say that. Wait, you, I give thirty wait. days, days, ninety days, one hundred twenty days. Like, um, um they they got they got. I don't. I mean, they do, but they, they don't hold it down. Cause really it's like it's ways to get around that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah. It, I mean, it must be hard to to satisfy all the sanctioning bodies' mandatories because it's four different ones, right? And they don't all have the same fighters that they want you to they, fight. Right, they don't all have the same fighters, and they they really have. What's funny about it is I don't. The rules have to change when something like this comes into play. To where because every year you have to fight a mandatory and a. You can you can choose one. Mm. So they got a, give, a give me and a mandatory. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so and really, the give me like the top ten. So yeah. really not a give me, but <laughs> but it yeah. is. They can fight. So yeah, yeah. Let, let me ask you this: Everybody in boxing now is is buzzing about the the one of the most anticipated fights in a long time. Obviously, Errol right. versus Crawford. Right. Um, I know nothing's signed yet, and I know you—you know—you're not even thinking about it until it's signed. But I mean, 
how much is this how likely is this in your opinion that this is going to happen this fight mm, it's like uh, what guy like Terrence Crawford fights I mean we're training in the gym you know and it's like um I know that, I mean I know it's likely it's just all up to him off up to Crawford it's, it's up to him yeah Errol's ready well, I mean, you know, you know, they're making a deal. He doesn't have anybody who can make a deal who can negotiate for him or, or, you know what I mean? So it's like they, you know, they had to be, you know, talk to him, sit down and do whatever. You know, whoever his representatives are, you know. And when that fight happens, and we'll talk again, obviously, but do you see that fight being a difficult fight or do you see that fight going where, like, Errol kind of has what it takes to kind of, you know, styles make fights, and Errol's style will be able to make an easier time of it than most people think. Hey, man, I think that. See, the thing about it is, what's Errol's style? I mean, you think about it, he fought Kell Brook one way. Yeah. He's one way. He fought uh, the, the kid he knocked out. That, was, that didn't count in the first round. Then he fought, uh, fought uh, Sean Porter one way, fought Mike Garcia another way. He fought Danny Garcia another way, and then he fought Ugas another way. Okay. What's style? Tell me, tell me what his style is. I it's, mean, I guess if you had to sum it up, he's he's just kind of he's kind of like a yeah. You're right because he'll walk you down and pound on you, but he doesn't always do that. Sometimes he'll box you. Right. Yeah. So okay. like, that's what you're saying. like you, you you can't tell you know what he's gonna do until he does it. And listen. And, but one thing we know, he, what his style is, he'll break your ribs and he'll break your face. That's what his style is. <laughs> That's a good style. I like that style. Listen, listen. He breaks your ribs and he breaks their faces. Do you have so, As your guy is on the top of the pile right now, What at what point in his career do you think he's at? I know it's the hottest spot in the world, but, you know, can he climb higher? Which one? Who? Charles. Errol. Errol. Charles. Errol, whoever just won that fight. Oh, Jamel. Jamel. I mean, I think that, man, it can't get no higher than the, you know, undisputed championship. But I think that from a celebrity perspective, yeah, I mean, you know, he can. you can always grow and be bigger and better. That's what I believe. Uh, Sim Jr., what's up? Um, well, uh, let, me, let me go back to the, do you feel like somebody who switches stances, you know, goes orthodox, <laughs> South Paul, do you feel like hey, that? Hey, hey, hey. Let me stop that shit. That's some dumb shit. <laughs> right. When you you listen, when you, when you boxing, that's some new shit, right? Man, listen, man. Okay, whatever, man. Nobody care about that stuff, man. You for real? <laughs> Kel Brooks switched up, but he only did it twice. You know, we most of these guys try that crap, man. Listen, man. Yeah, yeah. Like this, if you prepare for it, what's what's your benefit? I mean, we we prepare, but I'm. No oh, man, oh, man, listen, man, that's that's some dumb shit, man. Listen, <laughs> boxing is about technique, not about more. Boxers today are more about athleticism. Okay. Athleticism, not about skill and technique. We're okay. not saying Berlin wasn't athletic. We're saying he won with his skills. See what I'm saying? These guys win with their technique. Well, they leave, they win with their athleticism, their speed, their quickness. When, like I said, some guys who fight, who have fought. They lost their athleticism. They started getting knocked out, just like regular people, just like everybody else. Great. So what I'm saying is, listen, it's not saying Ray Leonard or Sweet P. Sweet P was very athletic, right? But he had boxing skills. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So these kids today, generally, are, they do everything athleticism and quickness and speed, reaction time. And, that's, yeah. and listen, no technique. Ten minutes. It takes a special kind of dude, man, to, to be athletic and be a fighter. It's crazy. Cause but it's, yeah, but this is the thing about it. No, no, listen, but that athleticism is great, but when you got somebody with some good skills and technique with a good jab, that yep. shit don't matter. So, you don't, so you're, saying, you're saying that none of that matters? Switching up stances doesn't make a difference? Man, I mean, to some, listen, man, think about this. This is what you got to understand. To, have, so... To a top tier fighter, somebody who has skills and technique, I don't think it makes a difference. But like to a sub par fighter, it yeah. makes a difference. And and also if the corner if the corner 
can't figure out what to say to the to the fighter to make him to get him back on track, then you know it's a it's, it's a whole lot of problems. But if if, if the corner's uh, ready for it, right, and, and the fighter's ready for it, because you know, see, at the end of the day, it's you wait on wait on him to do shit. You want okay? We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like this, put it like this too. Nobody's saying he's not a phenomenal fighter. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we fought left handed fighters. We fought right handed fighters before. Yeah. I mean, like, you fight, you know, you go to the Olympics. You, I mean, you have the pro. You fought left handed fighters. You fight left handed, right handed fighters. I mean, and if you get one of them, you get both of them in one night. Okay. Then it's up to them to be able to deal with what you do or how you. React to what they do. It's up to them to to be able to react to what you do, to what they do. Do you, no, I, I do you, agree. Ever, you ever look at the fights almost like so the fighters are fighting, but then there's also the chess match between you and the other trainer? You ever look at it? Like I don't care about that, man. Eh? I just, see that? I I think about that all the time, right? But from the from the different perspective of, I, I mean, I don't care about what I mean. Listen, I don't think about the coach at all. I think about what the fighter does, what he's gonna do. You know what I mean? But that's what I'm thinking about. But the funny thing about it is I think most people think the other way. Like, they think about what he's going to do. But I'm, I was like, what I'm going to do? I mean, I don't care about I don't care about that. I mean, you know, I think all these trainers are good at what they do. These guys get to the level. Phenomenal. I'm not, I mean, I don't, I'm not thinking about them. You know, I, I listen, somebody asked me a question similar to that years ago, like when Errol was going to fight Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia. And I said, the guy, what do you think about the judge? I said, I think he's a great trainer. I said, but I'm my greatest competition. So what happened was, I said that, I traded that. So now I own that. So I'm my greatest competition. I'm not worried about them. Now, they may be worried about something else, but I mean, I focus on, if I focus on me being the best version of myself, I focus on my guy. Because it's really hard. It's really hard to be consistent. So if you think about Terrence Crawford, been training, I mean, been world champ for like, what, seven, eight years? Mm -hmm. now, and so it's very hard. It's very hard to have a guy who's a world champ and to be that consistent. But he had three coaches also. So oh, it's very hard, too. Regardless, you got one or 12 of them. It's still hard to be consistent as a fighter, consistent as that group, that conglomerate, that group of guys to keep this guy to be champ. Then they had the other guy, Jamel Herring. So it's very difficult, just like Canelo. I mean, they may be whatever, friends or whatever, but I think that I mean, it's still hard to be consistent, to mm -hmm. be like me training Jamel and Errol. It's very, it's very difficult, man. It's very difficult to um, to continue to be on that level and get these guys on that level. Yeah. So it's like people, when people see the re end result, they say, oh, man, no. I mean, you don't know how hard it is because, see, you got to think about this. These guys become champions, and when they become yeah. champions for a while, Sometimes they go into other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Sure. The hunger goes away a little bit, at least. I don't, I don't think the hunger goes away. I think that, hey man, it's easy. Uh, everybody, it's, everybody trying to get to you. They're trying to get in your ear. The hunger changes. Changes. Now, you, right. You, you're still hungry because you you hungry. You stay champion. Right. I'm a champion. You want to stay champion. You don't right. want to ever say, "Oh man, that was a good fight," but fuck that. Right. I'm right. A state champion. So, so, the, so basically, the more successful you're getting, the harder your job is becoming. Hell yeah! Because look, think about the level of consistency. Think about it. And then everybody else. Oh, oh we want to see. We want like people to hit me up. We can't wait to see your uh, game plan. Like, goddamn man, let me live, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't put that type of pressure on me. It was like, yeah, man. So you always gotta think about this. You you got different game plans for different fights. Each fight, strategizing. Then you gotta. Yeah, so for me, I'm more all hands active, I'm like more moving. I'm, I'm, in, I'm introspective to where I would emulate the. So by me being able to do that or doing that, it's like uh, I gotta be in shape. So it's like, man, it's difficult, man. It's like, listen, it's it's not an easy job to do, and I think people are quick to criticize. Like I said, I mean, you know, man, and this is what I say. Think about this: to be a boxing trainer. For me, for me, I have to be great every day. In training. The fighter only has to be great one day. 
one night. Right. One night, the day of the fight. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, it's like you correct, 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 until the night of the fight, which you see is a phenomenal fight. Wow. And then there's the payoff after that. That's right, yeah, because it's like you, I mean, like, yeah, and my job is to be engaged every day. If I go into a fight, I always want to, I'm going training, I always want to be teaching, right? Never working them out. When you're working them out, you're BSing them. You're working them out, you're not even, you don't have to be engaged to work them out. But yeah. Right. Teach, nonstop, or correct them. I'm not a fan of my guys either. Like, I mean, please, man. I'm not a fan of this. I mean, because you know, sometimes you're so much of a fan, you don't see what they're doing wrong. You only look for the end results. For me, I have to be able to grade them, hand up, hand up, step here, step there. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm nonstop. I'm saying that all the time. Right, right. No, I mean, and it's it's a big thing, man. People are talking about comparing the fight to Hagler and Hearns. You know, like they're putting it at a real high level, and I agree, man. It's 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 going to be the biggest fight in boxing, and it's going to be amazing. You know, for it's everybody. It's going to be a big fight. It's going to be it's going to be a big fight. Two big punches, or two <laughs> punches, um, two punches. You know, I think. Oh, you know, it's gonna be a good fight, man. Yeah, yeah. Two punches. It's both smart fighters. You know, Errol's re real. I think Errol sometimes doesn't get enough because you brought it up earlier. He doesn't get enough credit for the, the technician how he switches it up. But but mm -hmm. what is the funny thing about it? See, the people today. I don't like to say this, but people today are dumbasses, right? Because they're <laughs> so you're a phenomenal fighter if you can switch, which is some asinine shit. You only switching because maybe the other thing is not working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you want to master something and master it even more and go even further and deeper to that, right? But I think that, you know, um, and so with him, because he doesn't switch up, because what he does is so slight, so easy, so simple. Listen, man, you put it like this. The fight, Ugas, if you go research Ugas, when he's when he coming back, he beats the kid, Brian Perella. He beat all these young prospects. Then he started beating the mid-level guys. Then he beat the the more the guys who were ranked. Then he beat, then he fought against Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? So he, so he was fighting. He he earned that spot, right? Mm -hmm. but, and he, and he, he, he fought Sean to a phenomenal fight, right? Everybody, some people think he won. Mm -hmm. Then he fights Pacquiao, his sons, and he schools him. He, too, he, he beat him like, you're too small for me, man. But then he comes in there with Arrow, and he was like, nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so see, from, from and people think that, and see, what they didn't see Arrow do is our skill and technique and intellect, intelligence, man, intelligence. They think like, oh, he's not switching up master. Listen, man, that's what's enough stuff is cool for some people, but you guys, when you get in there with top level competition, does it work? Well, yeah. you know, people you get caught in the middle. Huh? You get caught in the middle. You get caught in the middle. You get caught in the middle. Um, people saw, to a lot of people, they just saw Errol just simply walking him down and nothing. And that's what like, he was doing. Not what he was doing. No, of course not. But that's what they saw, and then a lot of people like, well, if he tries that with with Bud, it, you know, it'll be different. Hey man, listen, man, I'm just gonna say it like this. First of all, he's throwing over a hundred some punches around. All of the punches were hard. Dude. The punches were hard. You see what he did to his ribs, his face, broke his face, mm -hmm. broke his nose. Listen, so, hey man. That was contest. That was and listen. I don't think I don't know anybody in boxing who could take an ass whooping like that. <laughs> that's Ugas, not. That's for sure. I'm telling you because I'm telling you why I said Ugas because Ugas was the guy. I told him I said, listen, you're not gonna be able to beat this guy. You got to break him down. Uh, the whole camp. I was like, listen, we wanted to break him because there's no way. See this mother. This guy escaped six times and got caught. Jesus. In Cuba. Yeah. Six Times. And on the seventh time, he got away. He's in floating in the Gulf of Mexico for two days. He ends up in Mexico. Wow. This, this dude is like, who who can beat this guy? You got to break this guy. You can't beat this guy. True. Quit. Yeah. quit. It's he's, up here. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. so determined. You see what I'm saying? Who else? 
is Americans don't live like that. <laughs> we in America we don't have we don't have lives like that. That's the difference. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know if somebody so persistent and has so much fortitude to be able to deal with something like that. Think about that, man. The dude was caught <laughs> six times and he kept trying, knowing that they would do this to him. Knowing that, come on, man. Wow. So so that's a that's a testament to Errol's will. If he could impose his will on somebody like that. Right, 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 right. And listen, this is the thing about it too. Because of his age and because he's from Cuba, he's like, these are errors of boxes, right? When we fought, we fought Jeremy, boxes were more slick. They were more, they were more, they didn't use the athleticism as much. Right? Right. They the boxing skills. So yeah. when, when fighting Ugas, I had to be cognizant of that to know that he's a very intelligent fighter. He's going to try to catch you, you know, catch, you know, yeah, yeah. catch you to be here. So it's like you have to make sure when he move makes his move, you make this move. So you have to counter that, the move, what he's doing. Because you see, every, really, if you go back and watch these fights, and like what you do, they meant, his Errol's offense took his deep his offense away. He had to keep his hands up, and not and block shots. Yeah, yeah. Take his body, man. So I'm not saying that. Understand. I don't know anybody like that who can take that type of situation. No. And listen, listen, they, look, and listen, people like, oh, you gonna move around, man? He moved, look, you don't think Ugas is a what kind of fighter? Wait, wait, where, where's he from? Cuba. The boxer. So, listen, so that's all they do is move in the ring, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I remember people saying, um, you know, Ugas just stopped moving. Why'd he stop moving? And I was like, I think it was those shots. Hey, look, man. Gonna fight Earl Spence where he wants you to fight him at. Yeah, and I'm just say he, 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 all that Cuban stuff was out the window. Yeah, he's gonna he, he gotta put the front of him that he want that 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 he, they're not making changes. I get that. That's for sure. I know that. And I think, like I said, I think that I mean I'm not I'm not talking about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. I'm just saying that. Crawford's a phenomenal fighter, and he's very, he's very agile. He's very smart, you know. Um, and listen, it's gonna be a good fight, man. He has a strong will too, and I think that's what a lot of people are excited to see: those two strong wills just clash, you know. Hey, yeah. man, we don't know how strong that will is over there. Oh, okay. You know, who has he ever fought that had to break somebody? Yeah, yeah, we don't. Know. We don't. So the, listen, think about this. The most, and this is the realest thing in boxing. How do fighters become champions? I'm going to tell you how. With a phenomenal matchmaking team to help build and or develop the fighter. Build and or develop. So you build a fighter, you just get him wins. You're not fighting. But to develop him, you're challenging him at each step, each stage of the way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So hey, those people. Longevity to build a fighter, and I'm not saying he was built. I'm saying that the, the level of competition was different. So I, I, how can we say? Uh, how can we say that? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. And that's, we know, that's, we know, he's been looking phenomenal, but we know that who? Because you think about this: How do you say who's a good fighter? Okay, say you fought a guy who was whatever good. And you beat him, but then after he, you fought him, he never beat nobody else. Right. And you say, okay, well, all right. What about the guys that you beat, but then they beat, they, they kept beating other people and kept, kept, and look, and look at, or what about the people you beat and you just took everything out of them? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's like those are three different situations, but. Yeah. They all make the ones that you can tell is a good fight. If you beat them, then you go back and just get better and beat somebody else. Right. Yeah, but, but see, some guys, once you you beat them one time too many, they're done. Yeah, they're done. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the gig is up. They, yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, this, go ahead. 
No, it depends on how you beat them too. You know what I'm saying? Like you beat them. If you it's it's winning, you can win, or you can beat a guy. Or you can win, you can knock him out. Or you can beat a guy. Yeah, I uh, I would rather I would rather get knocked out than beat. Right. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, you get beat. You're not coming back from that shit. Yeah. You, you, you beating is repetitive, like round after round after round. After. Man, that's gonna be a, that's a lot of wear and tear in your body, man. So you, you never, psychologically you think it's worse to get beat or to get knocked out psychologically? No, nah, it's worse to get beat, man. <laughs> yeah, getting beat is way worse. But like if you get because the wear and tear in your body, you beat, you sleep like huh. You wake up in the middle of the night, goddamn. <laughs> See that right hand, that hook coming at you. You know what I mean? You get knocked out. It's one shot early, late, it's middle. Over. Whatever, it's, it's over. It's done. You get beat. You get beat every round. And it's mentally? All night. And then in your mind, you're like, man, why? I can't beat this guy. Then yeah. you start on yourself. Yeah, I mean, no, and, and what you were saying was right. Uh, Spence's resume at, at 47 is definitely deeper, and he's beaten, you know, definitely, definitely a deeper resume. Um, but not even at 47. Go to go to all the other 35 or 30, whatever the way. He, I mean, look at the whole thing, you know. But listen, think about this. If you think about this, when I was when you talking about the difference between beating, and getting knocked out, look how Bernard I would be finished from the day. Yeah. yeah. He, let's think about this. That was a horrible because everything he had done his whole career meant nothing <laughs> when he fought that guy. Yeah, Bernard Hopkins took it, took it. Mentally, he, he's questioning himself like, damn. He Bernard never Hopkins crushed, bro broke him. Yeah, yeah. Everything he had, the way he dominated people, beat people, knocked people out, none of that meant nothing when he fought Bernard Hopkins. No. Nope. Because everything he had done to beat everybody else was like, what the hell? He, I mean, so... Mentally, he's lost. It's destroyed mentally and emotionally because boxers are very emotional people. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. He was destroyed mentally. What percentage would you say of of mental is boxing? 95. That's a lot, man. What it's do you think, Derek? I think that shit, man. It could be like 95, 98 because, I mean, the physical aspect is – Something too, but I think that the the mental man, mental was like you. You don't know what it takes to get a guy in the ring, to get him in a fight, to get him in the ring. I mean, just depends on man. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's, it's a lot like mental. If you are not fights, I lost four fights in my career. All four of those fights I lost before the fight. I knew I lo I lost. I already knew it. I just went out and let that happen. Yeah, you can't. You can't win. I think you want to fight in the training camp. I think. You, I mean, you win or lose a fight in training. Really? There's nothing you can do in a fight to change it. It's all about preparing. I think for the fight. Before the fight, you have to be prepared for everything. I think that. Wow. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you because, like, if like if it's something, it could. I don't. I mean, I mean it's like you. It's nothing if you prepare one thousand percent for this guy. Gee, man, there's nothing he can do to 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 throw you off, right? But if you are um, not prepared, training not prepared. I mean, um, a lot of times people get people get into the hype of who they are, or the hype of um, the level of success they are. For me, man, I work like I can lose my job every day. Mm -hmm. It's very. Like, so I train my guys like it's not it's not solid. It's not there. You can fire me any day. I've been fired before early in my career. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you learn a lot of lessons from that. You learn that you gotta work like and my guy just won a fight, right? And he and he fired me. He's like, you know, one day, okay, whatever, you know. What are you gonna do? Um so do? let me ask this, and I gotta ask this. You know, you saw Errol and, and, and Boots talk a little bit. What do you think about Boots? Do you think in, in the future he has the potential to be one of the top guys? Yeah, I mean, he's already kind of close up there now. I think that he probably – he's a good fighter. He probably needs a little bit more depth. And maybe he's getting it in the gym, you see what I'm saying, and not in the fights. So, I mean, um, just a bit. I think he's a good fighter, man. I only seen him fight, like, um, maybe once or twice. But, you know, he's a good fighter.
he has a lot of a lot of buzz behind him. I mean, when I saw him, I was very impressed. You know, he just right, right. I think he's good. Yeah, and the size and everything. I don't think he's going to stay at forty-seven too long. Because he's almost six feet. But. No, he's he not almost six feet, man. He got the most shoes on. Oh, really? Not tall as Arrow. He's as tall as Arrow. No, I see not. It was like five ten. And boots were shorter. I think he is. Oh, I didn't know Arrow was five ten. I thought Arrow was like five eight or nine. Okay. About about five, maybe about five nine, nine, five ten, something like that. Okay, yeah, I heard. Um, and is is how is Arrow comfortable at forty seven? Do you think he's going to go up after this? I mean, he gonna stay stay there for whatever he want to stay there for. You know, I mean, this one is something he wants. You know, so right, you never, never know. Right, right, okay, yeah, because um, there was always talks of him. You know. It's hard for him to make weight at 47, and he used to – I heard he used to play football. He used to be, what, 200 pounds. I don't know if any of that's true. but No, nah, nah, I don't know about that. Nah. I mean, he played football, but nah, I mean, not in the 200 pounds, I'm sure. Uh, what's next on your docket for, with your fighters, Derek? Frank Martin. Frank Martin's fighting um, uh, June 18th in Houston. Frank? Okay. And what, what's that, 54, 56? Um, 35. 35, okay. Yeah. So how many fighters do you have now total? Five of them. I train five guys. Okay. Done. No more. No more? No. No. No, you wouldn't take that's, one. That's a busy day, though. Five. Really? Man, it's, it's some of my limit. You know, it's like you can't, I mean, you know, really, you can't be effective. Be great, I think, with training more than that. And I like what you do, how you keep the gym private. You know what I mean? You keep everything right, focused. Right. right. I mean, it's not a party, man. It's not. It's like you come in here to work. We don't need, you know, not playing games. I mean, uh, it's not a not a show and tell. You bring it home. I mean, you know, people at home. If I worked at McDonald's, my family ain't coming to the gym with me. <laughs> hey, help me with them fries, cuz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, come on, man. Nah. So it's like, nah. It's like, I need that. You want to be able to get away from the situation, go to work, go to the gym, and you know, be done with it. Yeah, you treat it, treat it like your jobs, and, and you know, right. expect it like a job. That's good. That's good. Well, uh, Dan, well, we've been on the phone with you for now, man. We appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, man. Good um, talking to you. Let's let's uh after the fight's official, let's talk again. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, brother. All right. Take care. Deuce. All right, man. Peace out.